What's going on, Wolfpack Nation? We are back again with Kent Climbing here. You know, I know that we have already had an episode kind of talking about Kent and, you know, basically what's going on with him, talking about, you know, the name image likeness stuff and, and the, the stadium. But now we're going to kind of talk about this team, talk about, you know, what, you know, what happened in Omaha, talk about, you know, just talk about the program overall. So, um, so first of all, uh, Kent, the first thing I really wanted to kind of get at is so, you know, with, so basically within about a week period, Coach Avents had, I mean, he went from basically beating Jack Leiter, who's, I mean, probably going to go number two, if not one or three in the MLB draft and being as high as, as maybe we've ever been. And then going from that to dealing with, you know, having to figure out who's playing, who's not playing to putting together the lineup and then, you know, finishing the game and then working on having to, work with the team and NCAA officials and NC state officials on how to, you know, handle the situation and then having to get everybody back home quarantine and then go immediately to coach team USA. So first of all, I want to ask, I mean, simple as, would you say that's probably the craziest week period that maybe any NCAA college baseball coach has ever gone through ever? I mean, that's insane. In my yeah, opinion. I think I think especially I was like like we talked about last episode. I was there first first the first weekend, so you know I I kind of went and saw some of the guys, and I was I was talking to Coach Avon, Coach Hard, and 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 Coach Coach was Coach was exhausted after the, after the first weekend. You know he he had gone through two two really really tough games. You know and uh, f- facing um you know two best guys probably that are that are in the College World Series, the um guy from Stanford and then Leiter. Mm-hmm. So I think he was he was already drained a little bit, you know, but and then for all that that to happen at the end of the week and then now he's now he's coaching Team USA and traveling everywhere. I, I know I know he's uh, he's he's probably looking forward to a little bit of a break of, from baseball after after he's done coaching Team USA. But I think that was that was something that that was a little bit different for everybody involved. And hopefully nobody else has to go through what, what those guys had to go through. No, well, and I mean, again, I think for me, and in the, I, and I'll tell you this, Clint, Ken, I mean, because I've, I've said before that, I mean, you know, up until, you know, this last, like I would say the last half of the season, I was 95 sold on, on Avon. Obviously, the biggest thing was the 0-6 and, and ACC championships. But, I mean, I think for me, the whole, end of, the whole second half of the season, the College World Series, Super Eagles, you name it. I mean, and then also, too, especially how we handled – that, that situation. I mean, again, how there hasn't been any coach that's probably ever had to deal with that situation that he went through. And then I'm mean, hopefully it'll never happen again. So, I mean, for me, it just really speaks to not only him as a coach, but him as a person, you know, to, to, yeah. you know, to really just keep the guys focused. I mean, again, I mean, this guy coached a team that lost three to one against rocker. Who's again, a top 10 draft pick and the Vanderbilt team. I mean, you know, who, I mean, is, you know, is, one of the best teams in the country, definitely top five. And I think finished number two or three in the country. And we lost three to one against them, which, I mean, you can't tell me that that, that coach Avon didn't have a big impact on that. I mean, I still remember to this day. I mean, you know, him, them saying that they saw him basically put his arm around Gary Payne. And, and I think it was the fifth inning saying we need one more inning, give us one more inning. And I just, I love that. I mean, in love. So, I mean, I mean, so, I mean, that was kind of the biggest thing to me. So I guess, I mean, I wanted to kind of ask you, I mean, just, you know, obviously, you know, unfortunately, you weren't able to, you know, spend the time, you know, from the player side, but I mean, from the fan side, and even also to you, as your time as a player, I mean, can you kind of shed some light on that? I mean, I think this is a time to give Avon as much credit as he rightfully deserves. Simple as that. Yeah, I mean, I think my my thing, and I've, you know, obviously everyone's on social media, and you know, they, you can you can say what you want about Coach Avon, but my biggest thing that that I've noticed is he doesn't. You know, the, like you said, the, the, the championships aren't there and they, they, they will come. But what he does for his players, growing them as a, as a man, I think is, is far overshadowed. And people need to realize what he does actually, you know, behind the scenes. What, what he does, he takes the extra mile for anyone on his team. He puts his players before himself, before anyone. So I think there's, there's, there's a lot to be said of – you know what he does that isn't on a baseball field for his for his players and for the Wolfpack family. Yeah, yeah. Well, because I mean, for me, I mean, the biggest thing to me, and because I mean, I know for for you, Clint, you probably even thought about this. I mean, 
to be, you know, a guy on the in-state baseball team, you know, who basically has worked your whole life to, you know, whether your dream was to win a national championship or make it to MLB or whatever it is, obviously winning a national championship and especially as close as this team was, it had to have been just, I mean, the guys could probably just not stop thinking about it. Simple as that. Yeah. And so yeah. to literally, literally be woken up by, you know, phone call, knock on door, whatever it was at two, two thirty in the morning and being told to go downstairs to the meeting room. I mean, like, can you even wrap your head around, I mean, what those guys were thinking during that moment of like, what the heck is going on right now? I mean, it, it, it's just like you said, as much as the football, as much as Avon has never gone through something like this, I can't imagine a, like a, a 18, 19, 20 year old kid going through this and being told that your dream of winning a national championship as close as you were is over. Can't imagine it. Yeah. And, and the thing, the thing that this is just for me, like you said, as a fan side, I was at my girlfriend's house and I actually woke up at four 45 in the, that morning. And I had seen the news. A couple of the guys were like, Hey, we're leaving to go to the field. Like they were going to take that picture and everything behind home plate. And I was thinking, you know, what the heck's going on? Mm -hmm. And I went and I started, I went on Twitter and I started scrolling and I, I was like, Holy cow. I didn't even go back. I didn't, I didn't go back to bed. I literally was up and I was, I was, I did not go back to bed that night, that morning. I was, I was in pure and utter shock of, of what had happened. And I was just, I felt, I felt for the guys and, you know, they, they, they took it on the chin, but they handled it like champions. So. Did you speak yeah. to anyone or talk to anyone about that, that moment or uh, have you been in touch with anyone that well, like what their thoughts were? Um, I mean, it's, 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 it's a tough, it's a tough line, you know, cause you, you obviously you want to, you want to keep playing, but at the same time you can argue, you know, all the different COVID protocols and all this other stuff, but it's, it's tough because I, from what I've heard, we, nobody did anything wrong. Nobody was, nobody was out partying the three days we were off. Nobody was doing anything stupid. It was just something, something freak that happened somehow, somehow JT got it. And, and then it just kind of trickled down from there. And then, ended up guys that were that were vaccinated were getting it and then I ended up seeing actually I think last week or maybe it was two weeks ago a map on Twitter of the Delta variant and where it is across the country and the most prevalent spot is the Midwest it's almost 50 percent of the positive cases in the Midwest are the Delta variant and so that's I think that's what ended up ended up being the, the straw that broke the camel's back was just the fact that with the Delta variant you know being positive on our on our team that we uh you, you couldn't you couldn't contact Trace, but the whole team because you know we're all hanging out. We all love to be together in each other's hotel rooms. You know we're playing we're playing the show. Yeah. We're playing two K. We're just hanging out. So yeah. it's a tough situation, and it's 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 not fair. You know how how the season ended. I mean, how many how many times have you seen somebody eliminated from the College World Series and only have one loss? It's never it's never happened before. It's like it's not it's not possible other than this scenario right here. And going to speak on that a little bit. I want to feel a little bit if you don't mind. I was going to say because because you, you got to see guys. Now, state fans have never seen before, like uh, Carson Falskin, Eddie Isert, and D'Angelo Giles. Uh, heck, we saw we saw Garrett Payne. Everybody, everybody's seen Garrett Payne pitch before, but he was still a relatively fresh face. And everybody, obviously, the legend of San Heightville became a thing. And he was pretty. I thought I actually thought it was the second or third hit when he made that hit, and he was like just laughing at himself, like <laughs> like pinch me, I'm dreaming, like I'm a pitcher. I'm playing it first and I'm going to go three for four hitting. Yeah. <laughs> so again, but and that's actually, there's a funny story behind that. And that's why I've got a big grin on my face is so there's a couple of different times where we're just, you know, during practice or even, you know, early work before a game or something where we're hanging out down in the batting cage. And we, we got to talking one day, you know, it was me and a couple of other guys and Sam was down there and coach Hart was, I was asked coach Hart. I said, you know, in my time, who do you think's the best first baseman at, at NC state? And he said, I think it's between Sam and Evan Edwards. And I said, I looked at Sam. I said, Sam, you're, you're kidding, right? You want you want this guy? You said this guy was one of the best first basemen at NC State that you've seen. And and Hart goes, Yeah, he's 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 smooth. He's got he's got a decent stroke. And so I every every chance I get in practice up until up until um, Omaha, I was I was busting Sam's chops about you know you you're not actually you, you're just a pitcher who can who can feel the ball pretty well you know you, you're not gonna be able to play first base like that and then I'm I, he just proved I was his biggest doubter just busting his, his chops and yeah I know. he goes three for four and off Kumar so it was it yeah was, it was just, every time you 
every time you make that kind of comment to Gim, he's going to say, just roll the tape, man. Yeah, <laughs> just roll the tape. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but I'm my, my whole, I guess kind of going, that's an awesome story. Um, that's a good story to know, but again, the, the new guys, Falskin, yeah. Icer, yeah. Giles. I mean, I think Payne, I mean, I like, like you said, they're not, they're not guys that, you know, a lot of, a lot of got a lot of people that fall into state baseball might know their name, but, you know, at, at practice every day, you know, they're putting in the same work that those guys who are getting all the recognition and all the all their names in, in the write-ups and stuff. And they're guys that are going to grow and they're, they're, they're newer to campus, but they're going to grow and they're going to be stepping into those those spots where you saw them in that game. And they're going to I think they're going to succeed and they're going to they're going to really, you know, project into those guys that are going to be in every write-up and, and going to be making a bigger impact on on the teams for the next couple of years. This game, I felt like just was special even though we lost mm -hmm. we almost beat them <laughs> we almost beat them you know with sam hadfield playing first and hitting and going three for four and you had icer uh giles and falskin playing falskin was at second and you had guys shifting all over the place and you know, one guy's the guy's playing right field booster center one guy goes to third he's playing left field i mean it's just like um, i'm those just, I'm just throwing out just different position changes yeah. i would say it's got to be one of the most classic acc performances like I'm not, again i'm not saying like oh it's one of the greatest games ever played but at the same time it's like i it's it's kind of legendary a little bit already like it's just like name me another time where you've had to see a f team of 13 players and one college baseball team play for a national championship almost when, I, it's just when's the last time you put your your the the guy that was voted the best first baseman in the country in left field when's the last yeah. time that's happened yeah Exactly. Just think about the perspective of other sports, though. Could you imagine putting your five bench players up against Duke or UNC? We'd or, lose by or, forty. Or, or put it this way: let's say it was football. Imagine your um, your uh, wide receiver or running back has to move to quarterback. Your uh, center has to move to tackle, and your wider your you know running back has to play tight end. Yeah. yeah. Some and it's like. No chance. That would be so crazy. That's basically what happened. It doesn't make any sense. And your and your and your uh, your quarterback is now your safety, yeah, and you're you know like yeah. I think it was one of yeah, the exactly. one of the grittiest, guttiest, guttiest performances um, up up there for sure of college baseball. Yeah, the, I yeah, was I, mean, uh, I was baseball. actually watching Packer and Durham uh, for the next couple of days after that game, and it was they were even talking about in in all time ACC performances. You know where does that rank? And I was I was sitting there thinking I was like. I mean, I'm not an ACC historian or anything, but from I follow a lot of sports and I've seen a lot of different games. That that one was that one was something that will be remembered in ACC history for a long time. I would say yeah. it's got to be, you know, arguably at least a top ten con consensus game in the ACC period. Mm -hmm. But you could, I would say, top five just as far as what the weight of it was, and mm -hmm. that was. I mean, we talked about this on a previous episode. For those who you, you want to go look into it, you go check out that video too. But those were just that was the uh, epitome, I would say, of guys just loved playing baseball. I mean, like mm -hmm. it was like when you were a kid, you could just go and play. You outfielder is going to come and pitch sometimes. He's coming, come in here and hit. Maybe he's going to catch a little bit. It's just kind of like the love of the game for these guys. Who everybody the the um, big brother essentially was kind of stacking the ball the, the deck against him, and they're like well, forget that. We're going to go out there and try to win the thing. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know. It just was awesome to me. If you, if you love sports, you love that game and you'll never forget it kind of thing. If you could, you could make a 30 for 30 on this whole baseball season, but you could also make one just on that game alone. And in those two yeah. days. Before we kind of move on to the next step, we want to take a quick second here and uh, uh, give a shout out to our sponsors, Flatlands Jessup Insurance Group. That has your whole world cover with agents in five offices throughout East North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need, offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial health, uh, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to help find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Uh, you can find them on Instagram and, and Facebook at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing for me, especially for, for you, Kent, I really wanted to ask is, I mean, I, I know we kind of, we had a live stream. We talked to Rob about this, but I want to kind of get your viewpoint also too, as a pitcher and also since you know, Garrett, you know, cause you know, what was it? Maybe like an hour or not even before the game, you know, basically, I guess probably Avon or Chrysler, Coach Chrysler, whatever walks over to Garrett Payne and says, Hey, listen, you're about to, we need, we need to send you out there to go start against, you know, arguably one of the more, more 
you know, I mean, one of the top teams in the country, not to say from the batting side, but still, I mean, you're looking from the, you're looking in the upside dugout and you're seeing Vanderbilt who is wi- widely known as, you know, a powerhouse baseball program in NCAA and you have to go pitch against them now. And, and, and also too, when you walk off that duck, off, when you walk off that mound, that Kamar Rocker is walking up right behind you. Like, I mean, you know, what a, what a moment, what a situation be thrown into, absolutely thrown into. And so, I mean, and this is a guy too, I mean, up until that point, you know, had like, like a 7.5 ERA, something like that. So, I mean, you know, it, it, it was, I mean, I know from, from us, we were like, Hey, I mean, you know, we'll, 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 we'll see what happens, but I mean, you know, for, for you, I mean, think about maybe like if you were hitting that situation, but also too, even since you know, Garrett, you know, what was your kind of, you know, like thoughts on, on, on that moment for Garrett? I mean, it, it's a, again, we we're talking about insane moments. I mean, it, what an insane situation to even be in yeah. for, for Garrett. Yeah. And I mean, just, just from a baseball perspective, you know, you, you're sitting there and you're, you're Garrett Payne and I know he's, everybody's really relaxed before the games and, you know, all of us pitchers after, after BP is over with, we kind of just go hang out and, and mess around and do whatever. And he was probably, you know, his normal self hanging out with all the other guys, just, you know, messing around doing whatever. And, and he probably was a little bit taken by surprise. So, but I think, the thing that probably helped him is the fact that it was so close to game time. He didn't have a chance to sit around and, and think about it and worry about it. He just said, give me the ball and let's go. I think that's, that was, that was kind of his, something that, you know, was unfortunate, but Hey, it, it, I think it, it helped him a little bit. He's a guy that's, that, that likes to, to build off of, off of success. And he gets a lot of confidence as he keeps going. And you could see that in that game. I think he, uh, he really grew. He, you, I don't know if you can grow up in one game, but he really, he really took, took the bull by the horns and, and just said, you know, let's go, let's do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, because even, even from a confidence perspective and, you know, I kind of want to ask this not only just for Gary, but for like guys like Falks and, and, and uh, Eddie Eiser that played that, you know, hadn't played really up much at that point. I mean, I would say it, it was kind of a blessing almost in disguise. You don't wish it would have happened, but you know, if you're going to look at it from a positive perspective, you do say, well, these are guys that are probably going to be starting for us next season. Like, you know, Robin Mick and I were saying that, I mean, Garrett made a definite, you know, a great case of why maybe he should maybe replace Reed Johnson. If he does decide to move on as, as, you know, as a, as a starter. And, uh, but like, even like for Iser, you know, it's like, like these guys are, are, are saying myself, you know, I just went against, you know, I just tried to hit against, you know, one of the best, you know, pitchers in the country in Kamar Rocker or from Garrett's perspective, I just went against, you know, and, and, and stood on a bullpen in one of the toughest environments that any pitchers ever had to deal with. So it's almost kind of like a confidence builder for next season. I, I think my, I think, I think might give us an edge, honestly. Do you kind of agree with that, Kent? Yeah, I think it's, it's one of those things, you know, with, with the season, you know, being shortened by a couple of games and we didn't play a lot of non-conference, you know, early on guys get their feet wet and they get to, they get to come in, you know, whether it's and get two ABs in a midweek game or they get a start on a Sunday, you know, where, you know, it's what, what's going to happen is going to happen. And I think the biggest thing is I equate what happened to them as, you know, when you're when you're learning to swim and instead of just walking you into the walking you into the pool, somebody just takes you and throws you in the deep end and says, get to the edge. Mm-hmm. I think that's that's kind of how it was. But I think at the end of the day, when you make it to the edge, you're confident you can you can swim a little bit then and so i think those guys are going to just build off of that and i think they're going to they're going to take this off season and and really really grind and really you know get down to the nitty gritty and, and get better all around and like you said i think that we'll see a couple of those faces you know in, in the starting lineups come around next uh next spring what's your th- what's your th- what's your thoughts on the rotation um coming up this year with all these young guys um i think you know like you said with with what, what Reed chooses to do, I, I know I talk, I talk to Reed every day. So I, I haven't – we haven't really, you know, talked about what, what he's going to do. I think it's – he kind of wanted to decompress from from the year and everything. So he'll make that decision, I, I would assume, after after the draft. Um, but I think a lot of those a lot of those guys that you saw in, in big spots, like you said, obviously Sam, but Chris Villeman, you know, he, mm-hmm. he came – he came up huge, huge out of the bullpen after, you know, in the postseason after his his midweek role had kind of, you know, been been ended. So I think he uh, he's another person that you're going to see that makes, you know, leaps and bounds, especially him playing for Team USA right now. I think that's going to that's going to help him. I know I've, I just watched his interview from the other night. And like he said, he's learning from from all these other great players across the country. I think that's that's the great thing about what what him and Sam are doing right now is not only do they get Coach Haven and. And another one of our uh, another one of our student coaches, Josh Pike. You know, he's also there helping, and he's 
what an addition he's been to the to the coaching staff with all the things he's helped with, you know, the younger pitchers and and everything. But those guys are also going to just work work with different different guys across the country, and you're just going to learn from them. And you know, you incorporate some of their stuff that they do, you know, pre or post game, and you do that that repeatedly throughout throughout the off season, and that becomes part of your routine, maybe. So I think all those things that those guys are, are experiencing, those two guys are experiencing as long as, as well as, you know, some of the younger guys, the, uh, the John Moralia, the John Moralias of the world, the, uh, you know, like you said, Garrett Payne, uh, Tristan Sipple, Kobe Ingle, you know, a lot mm-hmm. of those guys are, are going to be key, key guys next year. And, and they're going to, they're going to take an opportunity and, uh, and, and pounce on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, just to kind of, uh, you know, wrap things up. So, uh, one of the biggest things uh, that I kind of wanted to kind of want to jump at. So, I mean, you know, like, you know, one guy that we haven't really talked about, you know, Matt Willison, I mean, I think that, you know, we were kind of saying that, you know, it's, especially with how, how many guys are leaving this team, um, you know, it's really important to see some of the young guys really start to kind of establish themselves. And so I think that you're know, looking at, you know, having, you know, the, this great freshman trifecta of, of, of Sam Highfield, Chris uh, Villeman, and Mal Willison. I think state fans should still feel pretty good overall. I mean, for next season, I mean, even though we're losing a lot, if you, ha- if, if you can have a great bullpen head, you know, to, to the kind of build around, I think that really sets you up for a great season. So, I mean, just wanted to kind of get your thought. I mean, being, you know, maybe a senior guy and they were kind of the freshmen's coming in, probably, you know, kind of looking at you for guidance, you know, I mean, how big was it? I mean, I mean, and I mean, I know you kind of already talked about Sam and Chris. Maybe you talk a little bit about Matt in, term, in terms of, I mean, how shocking was it that, I mean, to see these guys, you know, perform as well as they have, especially in the postseason? Yeah. I mean, I worked, uh, I worked a lot with Matt actually in last fall. You know, we were kind of both on the summer program. We were doing a little bit of drive line, trying to build up some velocity. And, and he, he had he had a couple of rough patches during the year and you know he'll he'll tell you that but i think that helped him grow you know and he you could see towards the end of the year he had he had gotten that confidence back that he had early on you know especially everyone likes to talk about the carolina series where he he threw i don't know how many pitches but in one day it was it was actually unreal he's one of those guys that he's so athletic and he was he came in as a two way and you know we always joke around hey matt you going to do some you going to do some arm care to warm up and he's like Swings his arms back and forth, you know, a couple, a couple over top, and he's like, "I'm ready to throw. Let's do it." So I think, you know, he's he's one of those guys that could just use his athleticism, you know, to his advantage. And I think a, another guy that that is that you know showed some flashes this year. I, I look at I look at the Wake Forest game, especially as Andrew Tillery. I think you know he's another freshman in, in that that could sneak up into that and make it a foursome. You know, they they could be, you know, that's that's a scary that's a scary group of guys that are that are still young. That you know if if they put the work in and they, they keep, they keep, you know, on that, that, that ascend up the mountain that when they, when they get to the, when they get to the top, you know, this, this whole pitching staff could, could be something special. Uh, Mike, my one question is going to be, is Sam Heifel going to fight for a DH spot next year? <laughs> I think, uh, I think you might have to see, you might have to see what, what coach Hart has to say about that. I think if, <laughs> if he ends up being a Friday night guy, I hate Carlos did it. Carlos did it a couple of times. He, did, he, was, yeah. he was a DH. So, I mean, I, I, I think, think he's he, got a strong case to do it now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's got a, Sam's got a decent argument. I think, um, I think Sam, Sam likes, likes to, you know, play defense and hit a little bit, but I think he knows, you know, on the mound is where, where he's going to hang out for the, for a long time. Yeah. Like, like, you know, the faith, I think, uh, you know, I'm sure you probably saw Clint, but for those state fans who for some reason didn't see with his interview with Team USA, where they asked him, you know, are you a pitcher or are you a batter? And he said, well, they tell me I'm a pitcher. And I, I mean, which I, I, I love that. I think that's, you know, one of the greatest, you know, quotes ever. I love that. So, mm-hmm. um, so awesome. Well, thank you so much again, Kim. Really appreciate your time. And thank you so much uh, again for, I mean, joining us and, uh, you know, definitely I, I know for, I speak for most, if not all state fans, when I say, I mean, we definitely wish you the best luck. And I mean, I think there's no doubt. I think that I, I can bet that we'll catch you at, at Doak field for a couple, at least a couple of games every season. I'm sure. Yeah, most definitely. I'll, I'll be, I'll hopefully be living in the rally area for, for a little bit. So I'll definitely be swinging by the Doak as much as I can, but thank you guys for having me. It's, it's been a good time and, uh, hopefully I can come back on sometime. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much again. And uh, thank you all so much for tuning in and please make sure again, hit that subscribe button. Uh, please like this video, check our other content, follow us at Tuffy Talk Now on Twitter, Instagram. So thank you all so much and uh, please tune in for next episode. Thank you all so much and go back.